All right. Well, now we are talking about some rubber meat in the road. So we've heard from Charles Hoskinson earlier in the day. We had Shweta and Maria uh, featured as um, two, two winners of Project Catalyst Fund 2 grant rewards. We learned about what they're doing with the Loveless Academy. And so as we dive deeper into this ecosystem of technology and influence and, and everything in between, I'm bringing to the stage uh, Jerry from IOHK, Chief Commercial Officer, and Rich from SDK, Chief Operating Officer, my partner in crime over there, to talk about how we're doing things together and, and to figure out what's possible and, and what's on the roadmap. So, Jerry, Rich, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so why don't I kick off very quickly? So, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chief Commercial Officer at IOHK, um, which is the technology builder of the Cardano platform. Um, and what I've been, I've joined the company for over a year now, and what I've been doing is building the commercialization arm, uh, or one of hopefully many commercialization arms of the ecosystem. And so um, Charles Hoskinson being a visionary in our, in our industry, he's been very thoughtful about what he's been, what he's been doing and starting from first principles. So one thing that may, maybe many people don't know is that Cardano is built from scratch from first principles blockchain. It's based on a E2XO platform, which is similar to Bitcoin. Um, it has a smart contract capability that's attached to it. Um, but it, we've been very purposeful to make sure that A, there's scientific rigor behind the design, and then coming from the design into the actual development of the code, that it's been done uh, through functional programming through Haskell, which allows it to be a high assurance code. And I think Chris, in a previous talk, you called the weapons grade. We can call it like the rockets grade or weapons grade um, blockchain. It's built on a proof of stake consensus algorithm, which also makes it ecological. And on top of that, we were, you know, we're quite thoughtful to make sure that when it launches with all of its bells and whistles and all the features, that it has some of the critical infrastructure attached to it to make, sure, make it a viable ecosystem. And our goal ultimately is to make it the financial and social operating system of the world. And we started off in, in developing countries because we want to make sure that people who do not have economic identity today, that do not have access to financial services, can through this platform get the, that access that they don't have and really raise up the level of people across the world. So during that discovery process, and this is why we're working with, with a lot of partners like yourselves so that we inform the process while we're building the platform to make sure that, it's, that it has the features that it requires. We call them Cardano commercially critical infrastructure. It's got all the pieces and all the features that is required to make it uh, the, 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 the world's best blockchain platform. So. Digital identity is a first-class citizen through our prison platform. Governance is a first-class citizen through our Catalyst platform. Um, and we're also working on, uh, it has native assets. So it's not assets built on smart contracts. The assets that are, that are gonna sit on Cardano are treated equally as 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 ADA. So you, again, uh, anybody who builds a, a token on our platform, they'll have all the same privileges as, as ADA does on that platform. We're also working with side chains and cross chain initiatives to make sure that migration to Cardano is as easy as possible. Um, to make sure that we can capture as many of the uh, players today that are suffering from a lot of the issues that are in the current ecosystem, which you know basically launched as alphas, right? They weren't production-ready systems, and yet there's you know hundreds of billions of dollars of business being run on them, and it's 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 about to fall over, right? The fees are too high. It wasn't fit for purpose for that, and so forth. So we've been very thoughtful about making sure that our system is. And so when it launches uh, full mainnet, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna easily surpass uh, the current blockchains, you know, with you know a lot of the buzz phrases that are used, you know, better interoperability, scalability, lower fees, better performance, and you know, this has got the the will of Charles Hoskinson behind. He will make it happen, right? There's there's nothing stopping this guy. Let me tell you. So you know, he is not in this for the money. He's in this to change the world. He's he's in it to make the best platform for people to use. And I think it lends itself very, very well to what you guys are doing at Load and SDK. Yeah. Interesting about that, um, you know, blockchain is falling over. <laughs> you're you're uh, seeing a lot of um, exodus from some blockchains uh, with a lot of interest, especially commercializing over there, aren't you? 
Yes, we are. We are filling quite a large demand of of uh, platforms that like to to come over. I mean, one of the more prominent ones that have that has been out in the media is the partnership with Singularity Net with mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Ben Gertzel. So you know, he was very keen. He you know, p- people at his level, he understands. Uh, the technical advantage to coming to Cardano, and he's on, he's on route to that. We're working with DeFi partners like Celsius, working with yourself, working with big players in the, in, in data, we're like Wolfram. And right now we're fielding, and I, I'm I'm not going to go out there and say these are all high quality leads, but we're like somewhere between 100 and 200 uh, companies that have reached out to us um, to develop on our platform, and we're there to help them do that. So um, the demand is there, you know, I often use this term, you know, being Canadian, I like it, the hockey stick curve. So the hockey stick stick is happening, right? People, there's more mainstream uh, acceptance, more mainstream education about blockchain platforms. People are savvier about uh, which ones they choose. And we're the beneficiaries of that. We we see it every single day. You know, I'm starting to get like 10 or 15 leads a day. And uh, some of those leads are coming from Fortune 500 companies now that, you know, they try to go on, on their own. They try to do it themselves. But, you know, simply put, they don't have the, the depth of experience, knowledge, expertise, right? We've got a 200 plus team of people. We have a well-capitalized treasury ready ready to, to be yeah. brought to bear, to fund programs to be uh, developed on our platform. Um, you know, you won't find the level of cryptographic, uh, engineering, development, commercialization. You just won't get that in a Fortune 500 company from scratch. They would have to, you know, spend yeah. 10, 10 years and a billion dollars to get there. And mm-hmm. we have that to bear because we're one of the pioneers in, in the industry. And so we're, you yeah. know, very happy and excited to be part of this. You know, one of the things that um, uh, in the 2019 WIO Hackathon, um, I put up a challenge around um, interoperability. And, you know, I'm fairly agnostic. You know, everybody should have a chance to play. But you guys also joined in that challenge and put up um, cash for that interoperability challenge as well. So it's not like you're saying you're the only blockchain in town, but you also have the ability and the thought process about interoperability. And so that's one of the things I really like about Cardano. Right. So, you, you know, one of our primary goals is the adoption of the, as the industry as a whole. I, I mean, I think having come from traditional IT or legacy IT, if you want to call it that, there is a bit of this starvation mentality, right? That if I win, somebody has to lose, Right. That's not the case at all, right? We're in a network culture here, right? Metcalf law rules, right? So um, the more of our competitors that are successful, this does not mean the failure of Cardano. Quite the contrary. It's, it's we want to work with, with players, of course, in line with our ethics and our mission statement and so forth, of course, and, and our, our judgment of the, the, the value of the tech. But we're very happy and we reach out on a, on a regular basis to our esteemed competitors, if you can call them that. I'm not even sure they are competitors, right? And so, yeah, I think it's a big 100%. Yes, we are very interested in interoperability. Again, in line with our strategy, our mission, and our values. You know, and that was one of the reasons, you know, having been in the space and looking at all the different technology platforms, one of the reasons when Chris and I formed Load Studio, we thought about how are we going to commercialize? And we did think, um, deeply about it. And we felt that Cardano was the choice for us. Chris, um, do you remember when we were uh, having those discussions? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's a confusing space. I, I, I think for us, we had the advantage of proximity and multiple touch points along the way, right? It's one thing to read about these different solutions out there, whether it's you guys or Polkadot or, you know, because again, just given everybody the sense of you got to figure out what's right for you. I, I think the advantage that we had, Rich, was we had a couple of years of kind of watching things happen. We had a couple of years of looking at our kind of ecosystem investments and, and energy and time and stuff happening inside of Wyoming and inside of that. And we saw you guys doing the same, Jerry, you know, we saw the R and D lab investment and we saw like, and so I think a lot of it comes down to like everything else in business. You know, does the the tech fit a need, and does the commercial stack fit a need? And in our case, that was a hell yes on both sides. But then there's like the do I like and do I want 
to lock arms? Like, am I going to go run through brick walls with these people? Mm-hmm. And that's usually built around something a little different. Like, and that usually means interactions. And so I, I, I think, you know, I do remember it. And what it came down to for me, Rich, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was just like, I trust it. Like, I trust her. I, I trust these guys. Like, at the end of the day, like, it just feels right. So, you know, I mean, people can get there a lot of ways. That's how we got there. Or at least that's how I got there. All right. I remember um, thinking about, uh, you know, the, at, when they set the lab up, um, you know, we put our venture studio inside um, the Wyoming Technology Center right on campus as well. So we were able to use some interns that are. Um, A couple of them are now working for uh, Jerry, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they left us. And Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We're already stealing our people then. Uh, <laughs> kind of allowed that to happen. Um, but seriously, Gary, I do have a question on this thread. So, like, let's talk about those leads and the thing. What are the need states that you've seen? So, you talked about multiple commercial arms, right? We know what mm-hmm. we're doing, but the, um, but what are some of the need states? And then, what are the best need states uh, as it relates to partnering with you guys in, in your office now? For those who are interested, like, what ones can you solve like near term, really well? And then what are the ones that maybe are mapping to, you know, 12 months out, 15 months out, where if it's a big enterprise and something like that, maybe this is the right time to be engaging in that conversation because those things take a little time. But talk about like kind of how you sort or qualify fit uh, for like what, because you got a lot more than you can actually take on right now. I would imagine if they're coming in a hundred at a time. Right. So, I mean, like I said, we're, we are an ecosystem, right? So if we're not for, purely resource purposes or, 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 or bottleneck purposes, we can't service them. We do have a, 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 an ecosystem of channel partners that can also help. We also have the Catalyst Fund, right? We can direct people to that and go directly to the community. Um, and what we do, and you've seen this with us, working with us, and what we love about you guys is, is you're willing to come into the trenches with us. And you, you know, I also feel that you guys will bust down any brick wall in front of you to become successful on your side. Um, is we're very transparent in terms of what we can and cannot do and when things will become available and so forth. So right now we've been building utility as utilities become available in the feature set on the platform. So um, the first one, you know, we could more broadly call metadata services, which was our first foray into, into, uh, uh, into solutions in the market. And one of the, some of the big contracts we had, we had a, uh, anti-counterfeiting a solution for a New Balance, which was last year. Um, we've been working with Beef Chain, which you guys are familiar with, um, on a traceability solution uh, for beef to uh, bring as much value to the ranchers as possible. So there's been a lot of activity in the first phase, maybe call it phase zero, around uh, metadata services. So just being able to verify that something is, is accurate, usually in federated systems that have a, a lack of trust, that was the first use case. On top of that, we we invested heavily into digital IDs, which is which is our prison platform. Um, and so that's the next one that's become available and it's been available commercially, which is to say we can build customized solutions for our clients for over six months. And that's gonna bear some really big fruit um, in the near term. There's some really big uh, opportunities that are gonna be signed, let's say the next quarter, hopefully sooner that will onboard millions of people onto Cardano. So uh, it's bringing users to Cardano, which is great for everybody, and is creating a commercialization side where now that we have these people using these decentralized IDs, there could be value add services that could be added on top of that, which we can work with partners with and so forth to, to, to add to that. The next big wave is native assets, right? And that just recently got released with the Mary Hart fork. Now there's still some features to be put in place um, to make it viable for some of the use cases that are out there, especially around security tokens and so forth. But the base functionality has now been released and we could start working with clients ahead of the, ahead of the curve. And it's the right time. And I'll tell you why it's the right time because we built a platform from scratch, a protocol from scratch. We've got all the expertise from cryptography, tokenomics, and so forth, so we can help clients design their target state, right? And then by the time we've gotten to a point where they're comfortable with that, the features in the, in the products that will be available for them to, to do that. And then the final, the cherry on the cake is uh, is smart contracts through uh, Gogan. Um, and then the finalization of Voltaire, which started off as Catalyst, but the you know this is all when we hand the keys back to the community and it's a fully decentralized, an independent system. And then we do have some other 
uh, more secret projects that are in the research phase. Uh, some of them have been announced, some of them have not, um, which seek to uh, solve some bigger issues in our ecosystem, um, specifically around performance as an example, um, and other such, let's say, thornier topics. And we're in the process of creating some work groups around those, and you're gonna see more of that uh, over, the, over the year. So we're in this for the long run, Right, so obviously we're seeking to deliver fully featured Cardano uh, this year, um, but that's not stopping us. We're continuing, continuing to work on these uh, improvements moving forward, and we'll come back to the community and we'll, you know, we said if you liked us for the first five years, here's <laughs> what else we could do for you, right? And uh, you know, it's going to be in their hands, so they're going to they're going to tell us what the, what they want and how they want it. Yeah, it's awesome. Rich, you've been doing a lot of stuff with Catalyst and, and around the NFT space, which is some of the stuff that Gary's talking about, but help ground people maybe in, in the differences between kind of the commercial side and then also the community side, because they go together, but, but, but there's a real ethos here that is, I think, important. And you've been kind of uh, the point person on our side to, to really like engage in that. I mean, you've just been tremendous in that regard, but you've learned a lot as well. On, on kind of these self-organizing principles and, and maybe how to do things even better as a contributor. So, talk. yeah. So, um, so let me first say that um, when when we decided to get together with IOHK um, IOG, we did it around three different things. It was around tracing, track and trace, um, similar to what Beef Train Chain is looking for opportunities around track and trace in the supply chain space. Um, it was around NFTs and um, uh, uh, the NFT piece was the most interesting to me, really. Um, and then, um, you know, digital identity was another area that we were interested in working on and the um, conversion of ERC-20, right? And so those are the, the, the high points that anybody can start working with IOHK or IOG with around those things, find solutions for, for some of those things and um, there's opportunity. So um, I you know, have been around IOHK for a while and um, being really, really busy with the hackathon, wasn't able to uh, get involved in fund one and fund two, but I dedicated myself to fund three to make sure that I followed all of the pieces through from the idea stage. I put in four different ideas then three different um, catalyst uh, proposals. And the one that's getting um, a lot of traction is the NFT collaboration. It just seemed logical that, you know, with 42 different people putting in proposals around NFTs, that we should build a framework. One framework, instead of funding 42 different projects, why don't we build one really, really good one and use all of the people who are proposing and figure out a way to get them all um, uh, involved. And so I'm pretty excited about that. And that's the community side. But um, in our own business, you know, NFTs, we've been working on that for a long time. We've got licensing deals with major, um, major stars and influencers and so forth. And so there's some synergies between those two things as well. And so we're pretty excited about some of the um, NFT opportunities that, that um, are going to be made possible because of Mary Hard Fork and because of all of the work that IOG has put into Cardano. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, other than being the COO and chief cat herder now of the uh, Catalyst uh, submissions that, we're, that we're, <laughs> we're putting in, I think, you know, the, the thing that I would leave for a final comment here would be um, that when you're talking about commercialization, right? Like the business minds of us, that, 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 that gets exciting, right? That's getting to the money, that's getting to a marketplace where a need is being filled and people are satisfied and transacting back and forth. And that's ultimately what makes business business. Um, but you know, Web3 is about, about doing things better. It's about doing things maybe the way we initially thought they were gonna fold, uh, unfold. And, and that takes, more than just being commercial that that does take a, a true genuine sense of being community oriented right and i think you know again part of the decision point here was iohk as a commercial enterprise whose cardano project right is a, a manifestation of continues to do the community thing or, or to hold the place and space for community members to come in and be commercial but at the same time it's 
it's kind of an unsaid, I don't want to say it's unsaid, but it's it's not like mandatory, but it certainly is more effective when when you're looking at how you can get what you want, but at the same time provide through that kind of open source, open innovation model, a way to compete with yourself, but allow others to kind of draft off of your learnings and vice versa mm-hmm. and, and move that ball down the field even faster. And, and um, you know, I'm sure you both kind of tend to agree with that or we wouldn't be all sitting here, but I'm interested in your kind of take on that because I think that's something I, I think is really important that people understand when they enter the ecosystem that you can choose to do it a lot of ways, but this is kind of the way of Cardano and, and anyone who's coming in, including Ben and some of the others that you mentioned, they have a similar ethos. Um, and that'll show up as you watch their interviews from this event. Uh, but comment on that and then we'll kind of close it out. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, there's something I, I stole this from, from a podcast I was listening to, but I really liked it. Uh, you know, there's the three C's, you know, uh, code, community commercial and you probably could add innovation to that right so you build the right code you get you guard in the right community and you've created this economy right these people that interact with each other and as you know a network is greater than some of its parts right so of course you know we are looking for areas of monetization and creating economies and working with businesses right but we're you know we're enlightened capitalists let's say right you know, let's build the community first. Let's get people excited about it. Let's make it a place where people want to come to. And then there's going to be opportunities for everybody, right? This is this is, this is how all the big companies got started or the big tech companies got started. Now they've gone off the wrong path, right? They've become these, you know, we have an oligopoly now, Facebook, Google, uh, you know, Apple, and, you know, all these big tech companies, Amazon, Twitter, Um and they've gone off the path, right? This is no, this is not what the ethos of the internet was supposed to be, and we're kind of bringing it back to source. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do business. It's quite the opposite, right? You know, lo and behold, you got a bunch of people empowered, happy, you know, able to to find work and, and so forth, and the people are happy to work with you. It's a, it's it's awesome. I love it. I mean, this is just you know, this is what I always dreamed of, um, and so that's the way that I see it, right? It's not these are not um, contradicting objectives. It's quite the contrary. Yeah. yeah, and um, to add to that, um, the whole community aspect, you know, is um, really, if you look at the catalyst thing, that's really a DAO in itself. And um, what we're it's, the, thinking, it's the world's largest DAO. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, that's right. And that, what we're thinking about is, okay, um, how, all these people are wondering, well, how can I contribute something or how can I build something and and get funded out of the DAO? And I love the idea about the future of uh, venture capital that Charles has been talking about, right? Mm. And um, uh, so we're thinking about it at the same at the same level. So it's, okay, you got 42 people come in and they want to build something on NFTs. We can put in a Holonic architecture, another DAO inside of the DAO, an NFT DAO. And that way we make sure that we're not wasting our community resources. We're funneling them to the area of expertise that now... Um, everyone who's working on DAOs is in one place that um, is sharing all the knowledge and experience. And so it's a great experiment and um, it's really shaping up to be a, a awesome way to commercialize things. And so we're really, really excited to be working with you guys and uh, some of the things that are on the, on the horizon um, that we're working on are, are just, I can't even say. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out soon, right? Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> All right, all right. Jerry, Rich, thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for um, well, you know both of, both of your yeah. energy and effort because uh, I you know I wake up every day um, you know feeling very uh, good that that I'm not alone in this world and that the people that are running next to me are uh, you know embodied uh, humans like yourselves and, and certainly I get to spend a lot more time with Rich, but I really appreciate both of you and, and everybody on the Cardano side as well. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing the stage with us. Awesome. Thank you.